Welcome back to the Gym Owner Podcast with Anthony and Natalia. In this episode, we're going to be doing things a little bit different. We're going to be actually answering the questions that you have. And if you have any specific questions, uh, leave them on our Facebook page, on our YouTube, in the comments. Uh, we'd love to go over some of your questions and, and give you some answers. Well, cool. yeah. And why don't we just hop to it and I'll get going with that first question um, from one of our customers, Anthony. Is that cool? Yep. All right. First question. All right. So, um, uh, this question is, I have a gym where a lot of my members don't want to leave a card on file and, um, I don't see a lot of them returning. How do I fix it? Okay. So this is a common problem that people have that maybe they started their gym without software or they were more old school, or maybe they bought an existing gym that didn't have software and kind of did things old school where they let people pay with cash. The problem with this is the average person, um, you know, pays for a membership at a regular gym. A person may sign up for a membership, use it a handful of times, and you get 12, 16, 24 months of dues out of them. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the problem exists if that person was a cash person, you're getting one payment out of them. And that's probably on January or February. And you're never seeing them ever again. So, yes, mm -hmm. you want people to leave a card on file. The mm -hmm. trick to this is now keep in mind, there's no such thing as a perfect answer for everyone because everyone's around gym uh, differently. I could just tell you which worked for me and what has worked for my successful clients that that use us in this predicament. So the 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 answer to this would be you have to give them this like the understanding that they're making their own choice. Like they okay, I don't want to leave a card on file. So what did what I used to do is we make a, a one month limited term membership and let them know, OK, if you don't want to pay, put a card on file, you're buying one month at a time. And the one month membership has to be significantly higher than your month to month membership in the system. Now, you want to be clear to the customer. Listen, even if you sign up for a month to month membership with a card on file, you could still come in before your billing date and pay cash. Now, I don't get that mistaken. I will always except cash. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying there has to be a card on file in case you forget to come in and pay. Now, if they don't want to you know, do that, then okay, fine. We have our one month limited term membership. So usually, um, I'm trying to remember back, the monthly memberships were about $34.50, and then the one month limited term membership was $60. Uh, and I, I, what, how I said that was you're prepaying six day fees and getting the rest of the month for free. Um, and there's more administration work because every time you come in, you have to buy a new membership or have to go back in, uncancel it, reactivate it. So a month to month membership, less work, less money, uh, and it's 34 50. Mm -hmm. So is, and give them the option, or you could just have a month to month membership in a 12 month term. Uh, you don't want to have about 20 different membership options. You want to keep it simple, um, as much as possible. So whether you have a 12 month contract, a month to month membership, or maybe a 12 month paid in full and mm -hmm. tell them these are our options, you know, pick the one you want. Um, so that's, mm -hmm. that's what I would say is give them, is tell them they could still pay cash every month. They just have to have a card on file uh, yeah. in case, you know, you forget to come in and pay cash. Yeah. And if it were me, I would think too, like, Okay, so I'm going to pay sixty dollars to be able to pay cash. Or I'm going to do month to month for thirty four fifty. I don't think any of your members are going to argue with paying thirty four fifty because they have to leave a card on file. They could still pay cash if they want to, but they're giving them the option. So that's a really great way to not make them feel like you know that you're forcing their hand, but they're getting you know a better membership and they can pay right. how they want regardless. Yeah, so. and, and also kind of find out where they're coming from of why they're scared. Do they have commitment issues where they're thinking like, uh, I, I, I'm I, probably not going to commit. And if that's the case, then you should really go over the cancellation process to kind of, you know, um, calm their fears. Because I've had that before where people think it's almost impossible to cancel a member. Now their card stuck on file. So mm -hmm. um, a new member that came in, I would say, like, I don't want you, you know, to get into, you shouldn't be worried about canceling. We're just getting you know, this set up and you, you're making this decision to change your life, but let me just show you the cancellation procedure and just pull up the account and say, we just click the cancel button, put the, tell me the reason. And this is 
tell me why was the gym stinky was a customer was a was there a bad experience here is the equipment broken down you give me a reason why you're leaving and that's it it takes about five seconds and yeah. i would see the customer like have a little sigh of relief so and that tells me that they probably had a bad experience with a previous gym where they just kept hammering the card and it was a problem canceling so that that is probably the 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 case of why most people don't want to give you a card um you know but once you go over that i think you'll see and you still say you can still pay me cash just come in before your bill date and i won't charge that card so once yeah. you you calm their fear of canceling and that they can still pay cash you shouldn't really have a problem yeah that's yeah that sounds like a really great kind of solution to that um so i'll move on to the next question then uh sure. Because, um, so I am an hourly gym. So they just like have set hours, but wanting to go to be a 24 seven gym to compete with the new gym that's opening up around the corner. How would I go about that? How do they make that transition? Okay. That's, that, that's another good question. And it's important too, because if you wait too long, that hourly gym is going to take a lot of your members. So it's good that they're actually asking that and not just waiting until it opens because if you if you do that then you know you're going to get probably a good portion of your member base is going yeah. to leave especially if they're paying you monthly and not using it they're just going to use that as an excuse to say oh that's the reason why i didn't get in shape at xyz gym because they're not 24 hours i'm going to go join this other gym that's 24 even though they're not going to use the membership people don't want to be the reason of why they didn't you know do what they set out to do with joining a gym. They, a lot of people look for excuses. So that's good that they're asking that. So you have a couple of different ways to go about it. Mm. Um, you can go with an automated system. So if, you, if you're one of our customers, uh, you could go with a barcode system. You can go with digital key tags. It really depends on your budget. Um, if you have a very limited budget, I would say probably go with a barcode door controller because barcodes are, are super cheap. You can go on websites like plasticprinters.com, one, two, three key tags, and you can come by barcodes, you know, fairly cheap. And the barcode door controller kit isn't much money. I believe it's $500 plus shipping and tax. And mm -hmm. for $500, you have a 24 seven automated gym that's on autopilot now. Somebody declines, the key gets locked out. If a membership is frozen, canceled, key automatically gets locked out. Because mm -hmm. the other side of that is the other way to go 24 seven is to get a standalone door controller. And some gyms have that, but there's so much more administration work once you have a standalone door controller, because it's not, it's not, you know, talking to your, your database. So somebody declines today. I have to remember to open up that door controller software, lock out that key. I just canceled a member. I have to remember to go in my door control software, lock out that key. Or mm -hmm. let's say it's somebody that was declined and they paid over the phone. Well, I forgot to go unlock their key because stuff happens in the gym, right? And now mm -hmm. this customer is emailing you very angrily that they tried to work out at six in the morning and they don't have access because you forgot to unlock that door controller key. Stuff like that is where it becomes it, it becomes a little bit of a hassle. I'll say anybody that has done a standalone door controller just ends up going in the automated system down the road. Um, it's just putting your gym on autopilot. Uh, I don't care which software you're with. Uh, we don't use third party door controllers, so there's less of a failure rate. The doors just work like they're supposed to. Um, but I would say whichever software company, whether you're with us or anyone else, go with a door controller through them uh, or give us a call and we'll talk to you about how your gym is and we'll set you up on one but definitely for the uh the author of this question set your gym up now because yeah. it's going to be too late once that gym opens yeah no for well and that kind of leads to like a follow-up question in regards to that so they decide to go 24 7 um then the, they want to know like how do i um like keep people from sharing keys or sneaking into the gym now that I am a 24 seven gym. Okay. So, um, there's, there's a couple parts to this. Number one is you having to set up rules and regulations with your club, no current software. I don't care how much you're spending, which software it is. 
is going to run your gym for you. You have to set up your rules and regulations of being 24 hours. And that starts with sign up of going over those rules. And mm -hmm. if you're allowing website signups, um, I would probably add in a digital document where after when the people sign up online, that they have to go over your rules and codes of conduct and sign, not just sign the membership agreement, because it's going to help, uh, you know, with customer service issues down the road. So what I mean by that is on the rules, clearly state, even if you are, if you're, if you bought a couple membership, don't hold the door open for whoever it is that's on your membership with you. Everybody scans in, shuts the door behind you and and um, scans in and then opens the door. Don't hold the door open for someone. I know it's a little bit weird because you feel like you're being rude uh, for yeah. shutting the door behind you, but this is how it is at this gym and you need to understand that. So yeah. how do we go from sharing the key? Well, there's a couple issues. We have digital key tags where um, that would 100% take care of that because yeah. um, the app, every time with our digital key tag app, every time you open the app, it gives you a different QR code that has a, uh, that you can set the time of when it expires. So if you tell me, hey, I want the QR codes to expire within five minutes, we can set it. If you want the QR codes to expire in 10 minutes, you can do that. If you want the QR codes to never expire and not do rollover, we could even do that as well. So I, I would say having a rollover QR code system definitely helps cut down on that. But the net, what do you do if you don't have, if you're not fortunate enough to be able to have digital key text? There's still a couple of things you can do. Uh, I'm gonna share my screen and show a report that will help cut down on that. Um, okay. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Okay. Can you see my uh, screen and my mouse moving around? Yeah. Okay, yeah. sweet. So uh, number one, you can go, we have a report in the system called uh, member usage report. And this is a really cool report. And what you can do is set the time frame of, of all this key scan. So let's say I want to set it to a week out. Um, mm -hmm. I can set it, we'll set it to March 1st, two, three, eight. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna total everybody at your facility and how many times they've scanned in for this date range. So within a week, if I see somebody has scanned in 24, 30 times, that's gonna red flag where I'm gonna check that person out. And um, I would go into their account and uh, see their, their check-in time and then match that up on my DVR to see if it's the same person checking in. And I guarantee you just this report alone will cut down like 99% of the um, you know people sharing keys. Another thing you could do is um, we had something set up at our, our old gym where if you saw somebody, um, if it was after hours and you saw people that you thought were sneaking in, um, mm -hmm. we had like a pen and paper by the cubbies and I would, I would tell people, and I would say this when people were signing up, if you see somebody sneaking in, I want you to approach them, uh, just write down the time and your name and slip it onto my office door. And mm -hmm. if somebody was sneaking in, I'll give you a free month. And mm -hmm. before you know it, I would have like seven notes under the door. Now, 90% of the time it was people just being, just being polite holding the door open or it was a couple membership. But if it was someone sitting in, I ended up catching it. And as soon as I would catch it, uh, we had a hundred dollar um, fee where if you snuck somebody in, it was in the contract. If you sneak someone in after hours, uh, it's a hundred dollars. And I would call up that, I would charge the account and call the person up and say, hey, unfortunately the software caught you sneaking somebody in. Uh, did you want to apply that hundred dollars towards the cost of any other membership? And the person would either scream or they would be like, yeah, I, would, I brought them in. I would want to see if they would want to sign up. And I would say, well, good news. You have $100 credit towards a membership mm -hmm. that they want to sign up. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, whether you want to have it at $100, $50, $25, I wouldn't put it so low where people just start bringing other people in. Because remember, they're not signing a release. Um, 
And I don't want to make that the norm of non-gym people working out. I want it to be members only after hours. Yeah. So that's the long answer to that short question. Okay. Yeah, no, that's awesome. So several options. I think like between the digital key tags or having a waiver on file, um, you know, you're kind of and going through the member usage report, you're safeguarding your gym from having people sneak in. So sure. you don't have to worry about it. Um, so I'll go on to the next one then. So um this is basically like every gym owner wants to know how their gym is performing and like how they want to know, like, you know, how well they're doing or, and be able to track that. Um, how do they track that? How much money their club is making every month, like with our software? How? Okay. They good, do that? good question. And that, that is good because if you're not caring about how much your gym is making, you're like, I want my gym to make as much money as possibly can a month. You're really handicapping yourself with what the gym could make. Just like ha you would tell your customers that walk into your gym, let's mm -hmm. say somebody needs to lose 400 pounds. You don't just say, well, I just need to lose weight, right? Because it never happens. It's just the goal is too big or you, it just never happens. So make, make goals that are achievable. And in our system, let me go back to sharing my screen. Yeah. I always say you eat an elephant one bite at a time, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> kind of exactly. If you don't know where, what, if you don't have a goal set and you don't know where you're currently at in relation to that goal, how are you ever going to achieve? I mean, you may get lucky a couple of times, but you know, you always want to be in the know of where you're currently at in correlation to what that goal is that I, how you want your club to be performing. Yeah. So in our settings, we actually have goals that you can set for yourselves. Um, there's your monthly goals where it's just basically new account signups. It doesn't include your monthly revenue. It's, mm -hmm. it's just basically sales, all your sales activity, excluding the monthly revenue. Uh, total gross is basically everything, uh, everything, how much you, your club has made for the month. Um, mm -hmm. and then you have your new, new membership dues. So how much in new membership dues did you set up for the month? And keep in mind, these goals should be. Every they're not you. I can't just give an answer to say okay, your goal should be X, Y, or Z, because yeah. every gym has different overhead. They have different. They have a mortgage or a lease. Yeah. Um, how much you might have a pool, jacuzzi, sauna, tanning yeah. that's driving up your overhead. So you really have to just gauge. All right, how much do I need just to to break even, and then how yeah. much do I want to make on top of that, and then set your sales goals. Yeah. Cool. Um. But before we do go there, we actually have a report in here to help you gauge how well your club is doing. Uh, this report is called a location performance report, where it'll actually tell you a month over month comparison on how well your club is doing, where it's going to show you, OK, in March, we've had 37 account startups. So we have five canceled. Um, we see how long your members are staying with you. If this number is going up or down, if I see this number is going down like this, OK, what the heck just happened? Uh, I had my average member was staying me 42 months and it dropped to 12. Did a gym just open up? Is an employee being incredibly rude to somebody? Are we being canceled? Like, what are we doing? Like, we have to, yeah. we have to fix this situation, right? Yeah. Um, and then down here is where you should really uh, focus on um, how much in new dues did we set up for the month? How much in dues did we cancel? And then how much in dues did we grow the club by? And then at the bottom of that is where you left off uh, where you're currently at in monthly dues. But mm -hmm. I would definitely check out this location performance report if you're a customer of ours. So this way you could gauge how well your club is doing and what areas of improvement uh, need to be worked on. Yeah, that's awesome. It's just like cold, hard facts. Boom, right there. And you, I love how too um, the graph on the side shows you the uptick or the down um, so that you're able to have something that's palpable and you can see, okay, this is where we need to improve. So um, that's awesome. I really like that. Uh, so we do have a really great resource for our customers when they want to track how much their club is making. It's just going to tell you right If there. you don't know what areas need to be improved on, you're just going to yeah. continually not fixing those things, right? And just yeah. every month going, I hope the gym makes X, Y, Z money and then it not doing it. Like, for example... Yeah. Years ago, I had a customer call us and they were like, something's wrong with the program. We just had an extensive 
promotion and we just sold 150 memberships and I went straight to this report and I was like, yeah, you actually did. But look right here, you canceled 130. So that big month that you had a huge push on sales, because you had so many cancels, you really only netted the club by 20 memberships. Like the, there's no glitch in the system there. So what I would say to that person is you have to work on your cancellation procedure. Uh, why are people canceling um, and, and focusing on that? Don't just let people say, hey, they're moving. Not, not everybody's moving that's canceling. It's just because they're telling you that because there's nothing that you could say that overcomes that, that answer. Yeah, yeah that, that reason or excuse. Yeah. Oh, that's really cool. Well, I love that. It kind of gives people um, just an area to focus. Like this is where we need to put our attention because this is where clearly it's lacking. So that's awesome. Well, that's all we have for today. Uh, so anyway, if you guys, anyone watching, feel free to um, leave a comment on this video with any other questions you'd like us to answer. And um, Anthony, and I would be happy to, to help you um, with any questions that you have and uh, help you with your gym and, and getting it uh, performing at its best. Absolutely. And I would also like to add, if you had any experience with what we talked about today and you have a different answer or a different outcome that helped you, please leave it in the comments below. And yeah. uh, we want to hear from you guys. Totally. Yeah. Shout out. Shout out okay. to Jim Inset. All right. Have a good day. See you later, guys.